I've got an interesting pattern for you today, and I'm gonna go out on a limb a little bit here and call this one a forgotten fly. Now the pattern is called the Fall River, and an online search for it turned up absolutely nothing. It's in two books that I know of, both by Terry Hellickson, one of them which is his popular fly patterns published in 1976. And it was recently brought to my attention by Kevin Fry, a fellow mid-Atlantic fly fisherman who just moved out to Northern California. Kevin was fishing Lake Manzanita from a kayak and he couldn't get any of the rising fish to take his midges or small caddis. So he sees this cream mayfly with a big significant tail land out on the water close to the fish that he was casting to and the fish explodes on it. So he finds this Northern California fly in his box that looks pretty similar to the one that he just saw get taken. And within a couple of casts, he lands this big wild brown. And wow, what a fight that must have been. So this pattern, the Fall River, it's a pretty generic looking mayfly pattern, almost in the Catskill style, but it does have a pretty significant tail. It's made out of light elk body hair. It was created by Patrick Butler of Redding, California. And according to Hellickson, he says it's gained a lot of popularity in recent years, but he did write that 48 years ago and I haven't seen it in any book since. So is this truly a forgotten fly? I'm gonna say probably is, but if you've heard of this thing or certainly if you've ever fished it, please let us know in the comments. But either way, I think this is definitely a cool enough fly that I'm gonna put a few of them in my box. So there it is in the vise, a Fall River dry fly, a pretty forgotten fly pattern from Northern California. Now this is a size 12, it's a barbless competition dry fly hook, standard length. Now you be the judge, let me know if you think I should have gone with a one extra long, but I think we were able to get all the material on here and uh, we had long enough of a body. And I'm gonna use the same color thread for tying as I want the body to be. And this is a light yellow, almost cream. I'll lay a base down here to the start of the bend. And I didn't have enough to pull it off. It was slipping on my finger, so we'll just snip it. Now for the tail, I'm gonna use some light elk hair. Put it in my stacker, oh, probably 10 or 12 fibers or so. Not an insignificant tail. Let's see how that's gonna look. Okay, I think that's gonna be fine right there. And you know, kind of long, kind of chunky. So let's catch this in right here. And it's gonna flare on you. We, I'll show you how to take care of that in a second. Couple of tight wraps. We don't really want the back flaring like that. So I'm just gonna try to keep it on top and put a couple of medium wraps going back right there. Now it's, it's dogged down pretty tight with some tight wraps right there. But since we are doing a thread body, what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna use this, this uh, elk hair right here, pull some thread out and put some loose wraps going forward. I don't really want this to flare, maybe pull a little bit more thread out and just a few more loose wraps right here. Really don't want it to spin around. It is a little bit on me, but I think we're gonna have a, a fine body right there. So now when you get up here to where we're gonna catch in the hackle, you can go with a few tight wraps just to really secure it. Now we'll snip this off. I'll put a few wraps right here to just bury this and leave my thread a couple of eye links back where I'm gonna catch in the wing. And the wing is just a clump of barred wood lemon duck. Pretty good fibers right here. You see these in some dry fly wings, but also in some wet flies. And I've got a medium sized tuft right here, but before I catch it in, I'll just kind of lick my fingers and then roll it around to try and unmarry them if you can. I think that, well, that's okay. And I'm gonna catch it in, just kind of be the judge right here of when you stack them up, are they gonna be just a little bit taller than our hackle? Let's see, yeah, that is, I think. So let's go ahead and a couple tight wraps to secure this. Now I'm gonna stand them up with a few wraps up in front of them before I split them. Okay, so that's a fair size chunk right there. It's not huge, but either grab your bodkin or just your fingers and then try to evenly split them right here. And we'll put uh, figure eight wraps, X wraps in between them. Maybe, you know, four wraps or so. And 
take a look at that. It's not completely spent, maybe 35, 40 degree separation right there. I think that's gonna be just fine. Now I'm gonna put my thread about the middle of the body and catch in some yellow floss. Now this is another thing, I wish I had a, a photo of this fly to look at, but I didn't. All I had was that drawing in Hellickson's book, which said use a cream, light yellow thread for the body, and then it just said a yellow thread for the rib. So are we gonna be able to see a difference here between this light yellow cream body and this you know, brighter yellow thread? Not that much, but you know, maybe the fish will be able to see it. So I'm only using a, a 70 denier thread here, so it's gonna take me a few minutes to get a thick body. So I'll speed this up, just bear with me. Okay, I think that's full enough, that's creamy enough. It does start to look like a little sulfur right now. And I'm gonna kinda of spin this together. This yellow thread I've got right now is a rib. It's a 210 denier, so it is a little bit thicker. But again, I'm not sure how vital this step is. Can you really see it? Will the fish really be able to see it? I don't know. But it doesn't take that long and it is in the recipe, so I'm going with it. Okay, a couple extra wraps to just really secure that. And how much room do I have to put my hackle in front of that? I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to get two wraps in front of that wing or not. So I'm gonna back my thread up just a little so that I can get at least three, maybe four wraps behind the wing, and then one or two in front of it. And the hackle is just a light ginger. So it's an almost white, almost cream. And what I've done, I've I've stripped a few extra fibers from the side that's gonna go down closest to the hook. And when you do that, sometimes it helps that first wrap go down just a little bit cleaner. Doesn't always make a difference, but sometimes it does. So catch this in, plenty of wraps behind it. Now we'll do a couple wraps up in front, bend this stem back and trim it. Now let's just wrap this hackle. And I think I tied that far enough back that I can definitely get probably four wraps behind this wing. Okay, there's four. Now let's see if we can get how many we can get in front of it. There's one. Yeah, I'm gonna live on the edge and try to go with two. It might get a little shaggy, but we'll be able to clean it up. So go ahead and catch this off. Okay, now before I snip that excess, I'm gonna just kind of lick my fingers here and pull everything back to just try and get a little bit of room for a head and a whip finish here. And as soon as I let these go, they're gonna to wanna to spring back, so I'm gonna grab the whip finish tool and do it kinda of quickly before they, you know, bounce back too much on me. Might have to zigzag them through a little bit right here, just try not to trap any going forward. And if you're lucky, you can pull that off. I think we did just fine. So let's go in here and saw this thread off. And pull this forward, trim this. Okay, take a look. Is our wing still split? I think it is. We're a little bit shaggy right here. Do we want to trim some of these or just try to push them forward? Uh, up to you, either way. I'm not really going to worry about it. I'm going to put a drop of head cement on it, call this thing a fishable fly. Maybe just a little bit of trimming, but I think we're okay. So that's it, my friends, the Fall River. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care, and we'll see you next time.